In this video, we're going to take an introductory look at the Curse tool, one of Photoshop's most powerful and flexible tools. And in particular, we're going to look at how to use this tool to make very precise adjustments to the tonal range and contrast of two black and white portraits. Okay, so to make a start, we need to create a new Curves Adjustment Layer. Now, I can either do that from the Layer menu, so Layer, New Adjustment Layer, or Curves, or I can do it a slightly quicker way from the bottom of the Layers palette. Um, I can click the symbol and I can create a new Curves Adjustment Layer. This brings up the Curves dialog in the Properties palette. Now, if you can't see your Layers palette or your Properties palette, just go to the Window menu and make sure that both are selected. So there's Properties and there's Layers. Okay, so what do we have? We have a line, we have two sliders, and we have the histogram in the background. Now, if at this stage you can't see the histogram, click in the top right of the Properties palette, select Curves Display Options. Okay, so where do we start? Let's start by taking a look at the sliders at the bottom of the Curves dialog, so the black point slider and the white point slider. Now, as we mentioned earlier, um, there's a gap at the top of the histogram, so this means there's no very bright highlights in the image. If I drag the white point slider across, what you'll see is the image gets brighter. So if I deactivate Curves 1, reactivate it, you can see the image as a whole is getting a little bit brighter, but particularly in the highlights. So if we take a look at the histogram top right, you can see now we have a full range of tones all the way through from black or zero on the left through to white on the right or 255 in terms of um, the Photoshop numbers. And you can see those numbers reflected at the bottom here. This point, the input value is 222, the output is 255. So as I mentioned, zero is black, 128 is mid gray, 255 is white. What I've done now is I've told Photoshop anything at a value of 222 or above, output it at 255 or output it as white. So what we've done is we've extended the tonal range. Okay, so when I moved the white point slider, I kind of guessed where it needed to go, but there's a much more precise way of doing this. If I hold down the Alt key and then I click the white point slider, what you'll see is that the screen goes black. So let's go back to the beginning here. So here's our starting point. Watch what happens as I hold down the Alt key and drag towards the left. As I enter the data, so you see the white point is now within the histogram, we, we start getting white areas on the screen. What this is indicating is that I've now clipped the highlight detail. So if I let go of the Alt key and the mouse button, you'll see now I've clipped the detail down the edge here. So what I need to do, um, because I don't want to clip any highlights, is take this as far as I can until the little white dots have disappeared. So that's roughly the point where I need to go. There's one, I think, one tiny pixel in the middle that's clipped, and that's probably a specular reflection off a ring, so I'm not too bothered about that. This also works for the black point slider, but kind of the other way around. So if I hold down the Alt key and click, you'll see the screen starts out white, and as I drag into the data, um, shadow clipping is indicated in black. Now maybe with this image, let's just take another quick look. Some shadow clipping is unimportant. We've got some deep shadows here. I don't want to lose this kind of structural detail down a dress. I don't want to lose these shadows in the background. And I certainly don't want to lose any detail in the hair. And we can monitor that by holding down the Alt key and bringing this across. So we've got a little bit of clipping there. Um, let's, let's leave it at that point. Okay, so what we've done is we've moved the white and the black point. But that's not the strength of the Curves tool. The strength of the Curves tool is that you can add points to this line. Let's reset, let's reset these points here. I'm going to do something slightly different now. I'm going to add a point in the middle. Now, if I click and hold this point, you'll notice I can move it. And if I move it towards the top left, the image gets brighter. And if I move it towards the bottom right, the image gets darker. When I do, you'll see that a thin grey line has appeared behind it. This is the baseline, one of the options that we turned on earlier. And it's a good kind of visual reference point for where you're going with an image. So anything towards the bottom right, so anything below the baseline is darker. Anything above the baseline is brighter. So with the curve in this, in this shape here, everything is brighter other than black, because I didn't move the black point slider. And of course, white can't get any whiter than white. So to the left or above, the baseline is brighter, below the baseline is darker. Now, so far we've done nothing that we couldn't have done with the Levels tool. So even if I reset the white point, um, let's go back to where we were previously. A little bit of highlight clipping. Let's make the image as a whole a little bit brighter. This is exactly what I could have done with the Levels tool. 
But the Curves tool is a lot more sophisticated because you can add more than one point to the curve. Okay, so let's get rid of these two points. To get rid of a point on the curve, if you select it, you'll see that it's now black, um, whereas the white point and um, the black point are kind of a square with white in the middle. To get rid of it, just select it and hit delete. And let's also reset the white point. Okay, so as I mentioned, the strength of the curves tool is that you can add more than one point. So let's add two. Let's add one here and one down here. So the curve re represents black at the bottom left to white at the top. The midpoint is mid gray, so numerically a value of 128. Let's just add a point there for a minute just to lock the center of the curve down. Now, if I drag this top point towards the top left, and you watch the image while I'm doing this, what you'll see is the highlights are getting brighter. So the midpoints are staying the same because I added a point to lock them. Uh, the shadows are staying the same because there's another point there, but the highlights have got brighter. If I now drag this bottom point down towards the bottom right, you can see that I'm making the shadows darker. Let's drag the white point a little bit further. So this is the real strength of the Curves tool. You can add multiple points, which can add very precise control of contrast. Let me delete the middle one now because we don't need it. So if we think about this in terms of the baseline, you can see now anything from white to mid-tones is getting brighter, anything from mid-tones to shadows is getting darker. Now in terms of the image we have in front of us, this is perhaps slightly overdone now. I've lost some detail down the edge of a dress, not in terms of clipping, but it's visually difficult to make out. So maybe I won't make the shadows quite as dark, let's take that back a little bit. Maybe I'd like a little bit more light down her face and a little bit more light in her arms, so let's pull that point over. So what we can do is move these points around until we create the kind of tonal balance and the contrast that we want in an image. And in this case, I kind of want it to be just a fraction lighter. So this is what's called an S-shaped curve. Um, it's one of the most useful shaped curves you can come across. And we did this simply by adding two points and then moving them around until we were, until we were happy with the balance of the image. Okay, so now let's take a look at a second example. Okay, what we have here is, it's a shot I took in um, Dubai. We were just kind of wandering around, it was a grab shot. The light wasn't especially nice. Um, so this is an image that clearly requires some work. On this occasion, um, we have a very wide tonal range. Uh, no shadow clipping, but some minor highlight clipping. And uh, it's particularly on this kind of area of chrome in the bottom left. So let's see what we can do with the curve. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this curve off for a moment and I'm going to add an S-shaped curve, much as we did with our previous image. So again, what this is going to do is darken down the shadows, uh, it's going to brighten the highlights, and you'll see um, that the curve is crossing the baseline in the mid-tones, so it's not going to affect the mid-tones. Now when I turn this on, all you'll see is that this makes the image massively worse. It makes the highlight areas much brighter and it makes the dark areas much darker. So in this case, the points are in the wrong place. And this, I think, is one of the reasons that people get stuck with the curve tool. It's trying to work out where to put these points. But I'm going to show you a much easier way of working this out. So let's delete those two points. You'll notice on the top left here, there's a little hand and it says click and drag the click and drag in image to modify the curve. Right, we're not going to do that, but what we are going to do is we are going to click it. When we do that, when you move your cursor over the image, you will see that it turn, it, it's changed to an eyedropper. And when we move around, you will see a little circle on the curve. So keep an eye on the line in the properties palette as I move the cursor around. And what this is doing is it's telling me the tonal value of the pixels beneath the eyedropper. So you can see here, um, his face is all quite dark. You can see here the background is very bright. Now what I want to do with this image is it's, kind of, it's, it's clearly a portrait, it's clearly about him. I want to make him brighter. So if I set two points as we did with the previous image, all that happens is his face gets darker. And you'll see as we hover around his face, everything, all the tonal values in his face have kind of almost up to the mid-tones down to quite deep shadows. So all I've done is darken everything. What I need to do instead is add points that reflect the tonal balance of his face. So maybe one of the darker areas, kind of there just above his hand, let's add a point there. What I did then was I clicked. So I, I went to an area where I wanted to evaluate the tonal range, clicked the mouse, and that automatically added a point to the curve. Let's pick a bright spot in his face, round about mid-tone values, let's click there. 
Now, as you can see, the shadows are already quite dark, so I'm probably not going to move this bottom point on, not at this stage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this point across here. Now, what you'll see is I've now brightened up his face. I've also brightened up everything else in the background, but the image looks a lot better. Almost everything is brighter. You can see we've gone to the top left of the baseline, so the mid-tones and the highlights are brighter, but the kind of the, the deep shadows have stayed the same. Maybe we could make those a little fraction darker now we've added the first adjustment. So let's bring that point down a touch. Let's go back to this other point here. And what you can see now is we've still got an S shape, but it's positioned very differently with respect to the baseline. But it's positioned in accordance with the tonal balance of the original image. So by using this tool, and if you want to use this, I, I use this tool all the time. You can turn this on as a default. So if I click Auto Select Targeted Adjustment Tool, and let's take another look, it's now ticked. Every time I create a Curves Adjustment Layer, this tool will be selected. Um, I can't see any reason to ever turn that off. It's really useful, and it allows you to precisely evaluate where you need to put these points in a curve. So for the previous image, brightening the highlights and deepening the shadows worked well because of the tonal distribution of the image. This image is different, it needs something else. Now, one final thing I want to tell you before we move on is be careful when you're adjusting curves. You'll see that if I drag this point too far, what happens, instead of curving at the top, it becomes flat. So it's hit the top line. What this now means is that all the data from here all the way across to the top right is now clipped. Maybe it doesn't matter for this image, maybe it's kind of okay to blur out the detail in the background but maybe I want to pull that back to retain some of that highlight detail. There's still some clipping, but not as much. What you can also do, if you really do want to bump up the contrast, is just add a third point at the top here. You can kind of just pull, pull down the top. So again, it's still an S-shaped curve, very big kind of sweeping curve at the top and a tiny curve at the bottom, but it's still in this general S-shaped curve. So I've increased the contrast, um, but I've done so by only darkening the shadows a fraction um, but increasing the brightness of the mid-tones and the highlights considerably. So, same overall shape, but the points are in a completely different position, and I was able to do that by using the targeted adjustment tool to work out where I needed to place those points on the line. So it's always a good idea, if you're unsure about where to place the points, use this tool, check out the, the brightness of the area you want to adjust, and then add those two points accordingly. At the start of this video, I mentioned that we'd be looking at using curves with color images in a later video, but it's worth mentioning at this point that the techniques we've discussed so far work equally well with color images. It's exactly the same process. The key thing is to work out where these points need to be. So for some images, um, as we saw with the first example, simple S-shaped curve that brightens the highlights and deepens the shadows will work well. But for other images, you need to be a lot more careful about where you place these points. So in this image, deepening the shadows kind of just wrecked the image completely. What we needed to do was kind of hold the shadow values relatively constant and brighten everything else. So use the targeted adjustment tool, evaluate the area of the image that you want to concentrate on, add those points, and then move them accordingly. And what you'll find is that you're able to add um, very precise changes to an image that kind of match your creative vision and really kind of bring your images to life. Uh, that's all I want to tell you for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful.